I'm a gambler, man. Check, check. Okay. You got a Tallahassee set? This couldn't get going, and then once they did, they started playing. I did really well. I did. Too. Yeah. Some bad calls, of course, but I mean, they If you need me to tweak it down, just look at me and I'll up she, it. Uh, <laughs> and she was. The, um, the surprise, how. I used it, Bill. <laughs> I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'd like to welcome each one of you here this afternoon, this morning. If you would, uh, we'd appreciate you silencing your cell phones or either turning them off. And if you would, just please stand for the invocation and pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather this morning and to conduct the business of the great people of Walton County. We ask you for strength, we ask you for guidance, and we ask that you give us the understanding so that we can make the right decisions for our people. We pray for all those that are present today and their families. May you bless them in a special way. And those also that serve us, not only here, our, our firemen, our medics, our police and sheriff's department, but those that serve us overseas so that we may have a free country. And all these things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Demers. Mr. Chairman, we have some two additions and one deletion. For the agenda, first addition would be to extend the local state of emergency resolution due to the, due to the rain event. And the second one would be under public works. Uh, Jason Coon with the Juvenile Justice has requested some assistance in hauling some material. We have one deletion be under uh, public works, the recycling pilot project. Any questions? Motion to approve the addition and deletions. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Approval of the consent. Approval. Agenda yeah. first. Yeah. Motion to, uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is consent agenda. Need approval? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, the first item is under public works. We have three firms, engineering firms, that will each present a five-minute presentation for your review and selection of which firm will get the CR2 paved shoulder project, phase three. And we have a map of that phase three, as you can see on the screen there. It's the red section. If you're ready for the presentations, first up will be Genesis. Good morning. I'm Bill Klepek uh, with Genesis. I'm a senior project engineer, 
And with me today we have uh, Mike Graham, who's our contract support specialist, Doug Pritchard, our project administrator, and Sean Moore, uh, our senior inspector. Um, we've uh, reviewed the plans for this project, um, the County Road 2 Phase 3. We understand it's uh, certainly a seven-mile shoulder widening project that begins at County Road 83 and extends east um, to the county line. Uh, we are very familiar with this type of work. Uh, this type of work uh, with the shoulder widening, which will be a plus or minus four and a half foot wide uh, paved shoulder and one and a half foot earthwork shoulder. Uh, it's very similar in scope to work we've already completed for the uh, Department of Transportation on County Road uh, 1087, which was an um, ARA and design build project that we performed for the Department of Transportation. We completed that project back in April. Again, this is very similar in scope. Uh, particularly with relate, as it relates to the 1087 project where north of the Shoal River we could not do any milling because there was not sufficient thickness of pavement. Uh, we have the same type situation here on County Road 2. Uh, our firm has been performing and providing uh, construction engineering inspection services uh, since 1994 and uh, we certainly feel we have the qualifications uh, needed and the experience, uh, the proven experience to uh, deliver a, a quality product uh, for the county. Uh, we believe in strictly adhering to the project plans and specifications, and we believe in holding the contractor responsible for the work that he does to make sure he does it in accordance with those plans and specs, and certainly that uh, the contractor performs his work in a timely manner. Uh, we work with the contractor in a partnering uh, method to get the project moving and keep it on track, and certainly uh, do everything within our within our purview to keep the project within its uh, established budget. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come before you. Uh, we had outlined our uh, experience certainly in our statement of qualifications. Uh, we feel we are well qualified and the team here standing before you, we are the people that would be working on this uh, County Road 2 uh, Phase 3 project. Uh, again, we appreciate the opportunity to come before the Commission and uh, we certainly uh, would appreciate your consideration in awarding us this project. Thank you very much. Yeah. Who, who would be the uh, project manager? Who would be? You'd I'm be the senior project engineer. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, so, so I you'd would be the project manager. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up will be HDR. Good morning. My name is Ed Hudeck and I'll be the senior project engineer for HDR. The team of HDR and Preble Rich. Preble Rich is our sub consultants. I would first like to thank the board for the opportunity to be here this morning and, ex and try to explain why we would be the best selected team for the project. Two and a half years ago, Ralph Rich and I stood here before you, except it was at the south end of the county. And we were looking for your confidence when you were getting ready to provide oversight on the US 331 four-lane project from Owl's Head to Nokusi Plantation. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be selected by you. We got that job. And I think we gave, we gave the board and the citizens of Walton County an excellent project. That job finished on time, under budget. It was a lap project like this is a lap project. We know how to handle that. And we had no construction issues. Uh, so as this county phase, this uh, county road two phase three project kicks off, what I've done is put together the same team individuals. I'll lead it just like I led the Owls Head project, uh, Preble Rich inspectors, and my administrators. Uh, it's a lap project just like that was. We know how to do lap projects. Uh, we've done very similar shoulder widening jobs. County Road 173 is going on right now from Bonifay all the way to the, the uh, Alabama state line so we're familiar with this kind of work that 7.07 .07 miles of work is shoulder widening a lot of driveways the grocery store to deal with so there are some issues on that job that you have to be on top of and we want to give the citizens of Walton County uh, another fine project similar to that I said project that's what I have for you any questions thank you 
The third firm up will be Preble Risch. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning to present before you for Phase 3 on County Road 2. Um, we're extremely familiar with the project. Uh, we uh, currently are set up on site at County Road 83, a little bit uh, west of County Road 83 with our construction trailer. And uh, APAC started construction on Phase 1 and 2 last week. Uh, we had our pre-construction conference. Uh, with DOT and the contractor and all the uh, subcontractors on the project and their issue that we've issued their notice to proceed so they're they're blowing and going on phase one and two. Phase three is about a seven mile stretch uh, that goes to the east from County Road 83 uh, all the way to the Holmes County line. Uh, we've reviewed the plans and we're very familiar with the plans. They're uh, very similar to phase one and two. There's not a lot of big differences. Um, we expect that the uh, uh, contractors bidding on the project will likely be the same group that bid on phase one and phase two and we're familiar with all of those contractors and we'll have worked with all of them before. Uh, I just wanted to give you one example of a, of a project where we've um, made some tremendous uh, value and equity for the county. Uh, uh, an example of where our uh, abilities have really excelled to help the county is on County Road 30A, your ARA project that we handled on County Road 30A. Uh, it's been uh, a couple years ago, but initially the contractor was going to build about two miles on County Road 30A from Highway 98, uh, headed back to the east, and through some uh, savings that we found on the job by shifting a little bit of the, uh, by shifting the center line of the road, we were able to save quite a bit of money and able to uh, extend the project about another mile to get it all the way to County Road 393. Um, we've done work in the county since 1996. Uh, we're very familiar with how the county operates and uh, would make it a priority to uh, make sure that the community uh, of Darlington uh, up in that area are all familiar with what's going on with the project, when milestones are going to happen such as lane closures, and also to uh, make sure they're briefed on any delays or issues that would affect their access to their properties. So that's all that I was going to say today, and uh, I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have, but I, I really feel like we're probably uh, the most qualified to be able to handle this project for you. Uh, Cliff, I only have one question. The, the gentleman before um, with HDR was going to use you all as consultants, and then you all are bidding as well. You don't see a conflict there, or there's no... No, ma'am. Okay. We've we've worked with them before, um, and I think uh, I think what he was referring to is that uh, if he got the job, that we would provide some additional inspectors as needed, and if we got the job, that we would he would provide a contract support specialist to us as needed. So I actually, I your name in there a lot. Yeah, yeah. actually, actually, their proposal says that they're going to use. Um, See, HDR's proposal says they're going to use five. They have five Preble Risch um, uh, bios in their proposal, and Preble Risch has three uh, HDR bios in their proposal. So, um, yeah, it, it seemed to me as well that um, that they're kind of all the same firm, and they were they were submitting twice, but they're act, it's actually kind of the same team. Um, um, that's that was an observation I made as well. Um, so, any other questions? That's all I have. Any, anything add, clear? No, sir. Okay. Uh, I would just say that you know that uh, the team we're providing is uh, a, a well-rounded team with tons of DOT experience, and everybody that we turned in with our proposal is more than qualified to handle the project. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, just, did you have a question? I just have a question that, um, that um, uh, let's see, how do I put this? Um, uh, do, you, um, do you agree uh, that um, vendors should not uh, take um, county staff people um, 
on trips, give them gifts, take them to football games and such? I do. Okay. And you, you've never done that before? No, ma'am. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioners, if you would score those and pass them down to the clerk of courts, and we could. I think uh, I added wrong on one of them. We could move on to the next item whenever you're ready. You got more than 100. 30, 30. <laughs> I'll let Alex add it. Alex, I think I added wrong. Would you please? Yeah. I don't have a calculator in front of me. I couldn't take my shoes off. So. Next item, we have Mr. Stafford with uh, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Beers. Good morning, Commissioners, Mr. Chairman. We'd like to request the board to authorize public work to, to perform. The scope of work is specified through the drainage improvements associated with County Road 183 South and the Russian property. And this is just making a correction, Commissioners, to work that was previously done a few years back. Any questions? No. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the next item, our uh, county attorney would like to make a comment on that landscape <coughs> improvement. I'm going to ask the commission to allow us to extend the current contract for 60 days to let me uh, go back uh, with Glendale and review these, these bids and the bid selection process just to make – I've had some questions asked them, and I just want to make sure I can answer those questions before we award the bid. And Glendale, unfortunately, is – well, not unfortunately. She's at a, at a conference this week, and so we're not able to do that. So <coughs> if, with the board's permission, just extend the current contract and then allow me to uh, make sure I'm, I understand all the questions and have all the answers. You know, when you can bring it back to us, because this seems to have been on and off and on and off and on and off. I, I hope the next meeting, frankly. But, I, it shouldn't right. take more than two weeks. <coughs> all right. Thank you, sir. Motion to um, extend the contract for 60 the, the, days. The current contract. Current, current contract for 60 days. We have a motion second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is Mr. Larry Jones, Special Projects Coordinator on the condominium solid waste issue. Mr. <coughs> Mr. DeMears, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, good to be with you today. First, I want to say thank you for allowing me to work on this project. I presented to you, and I apologize that we didn't have the, uh, all the data together when we submitted uh, uh, for the agenda packet, but we do have uh, the information that we've presented to you prepared to go up on the, uh, on the video monitor. Um, the first page, and I've uh, provided each of you with some documentation there, on the, the first page says fact sheet. The first thing I want to do is to go through and kind of generate some data that we can move forward from. So what you what we found on the sheet <coughs> is documented there that according to the United States Department of Environmental Protection Agency, the United in the US the average individual waste generation is four point four pounds per day per person. According to the Florida uh, Department of Environmental Protection, that number in Walton County is ten point five five pounds per day per person. According to the 2010 census, the average size of a household in Walton County is 2.38 people. According to numerous sources, the average weight of uncompacted municipal solid waste or garbage is 225 pounds per cubic yard. The current rate for commercial and condominiums are considered commercials currently in Walton County per our franchise agreement with waste management is $4.34 per cubic yard per month. The current rate for residential collection in South Walton, again, per, uh, per the Waste Management Franchise Agreement, is $11.93 per household per month. There's an additional attachment there that shows you the uh, composition of, a, of the solid waste collection in Walton County. And, Rick, if you'll scroll through that, uh, there's just documentation there supporting um, each of those facts. If you move back to... Pass that documentation, you'll see in your packet um, what I'm calling scenario number one. We began this process to determine what, what the appropriate rate would be if the board so chose to uh, pay for all or a part of the uh, solid waste collection for condominium units. 
Um, so if you're there at that page, scroll on up a little bit, Rick. Oh, okay. uh, one more. Come on. A little bit more. Go the other way. Okay, there. All right, so in scenario number one, we took the fact that the uh, U.S. Uh, EPA says 4.4 pounds is an average of solid waste per day per person and 10.55 in Walton County per person per day. And then we use the composition chart, which says this is what uh, solid waste in Walton County looks like, and it was provided by the Department of Environmental Protection. And if you look at those, C&D waste, yard waste, tires, white goods, metals, are typically, we would think, not found in a, the condominium waste mix. So those components make up 34.1% of an average um, yard of garbage in Walton County. So if you use the inverse of that, or 65.9%, uh, and calculate back from the 10.55 pounds in Walton County and the 4.4 pounds as a U.S. average, and, and use the other numbers to, to generate a figure, and make an assumption that in Walton County, um, the condominium is treated as a single-family dwelling will average waste somewhere between the 48.3, which would be the U.S. average, and the 115.8, which would be the Walton County average comes out to about 82.05 pounds of municipal solid waste per unit per week. If you calculate that into the average 225 pounds for a, a cubic yard, it generates a number of 0.365 cubic yards per week per condominium unit. If you apply the current rate of $4.34 per cubic yard per month to that 0.365 rate, it generates a rate of $6.86 per condominium, residential condominium unit per month. That was a lot of numbers, uh, but if, if you follow that sequence, you can see how we come to that number. The next scenario on the next sheet I was asked to calculate is just a, what I'm calling it just the raw numbers. Uh, if you consider 10.55 pounds of solid waste, waste per person per day in Walton County and extrapolate that number through the same process using 2.38 uh, members of a household, Calculate the numbers of pounds per day, the pounds per week, uh, divide it by the 225 to come up with the cubic yards, and you'll end up with 3.38 cubic yards uh, per month per household, which generates a rate of $14.67. So there's somewhat two ends of the spectrum. Uh, one, you make some assumptions and calculate some numbers in, which uh, is, is certainly defendable. The other is just the raw numbers as presented. So if, the, if this board is inclined to move this initiative forward and staff does not, rec, does not have a recommendation of whether you do or don't, but if you do, we would recommend that that rate be not less than $6.86 per residential condominium unit, but not more than $11.93 per month per residential condominium unit, which is the same rate of a single-family dwelling in South Walton. And if you if you want to if you decide to move that forward, I have some other recommendations that I would like for you to consider in that process. Mr. Jones, what yes, would sir. be the annual cost under the, the two options? Under the the lower option of the six eighty six, right. between nine hundred thousand and a million dollars, and the upper option between one point five and one point six million. And I will tell you that we're still working on getting the exact number of units. We're somewhere in the 11,000 unit. It may be a few more, maybe a few less, but there's a number of things that we're working through to get there. I apologize we don't have the exact number today, but we wanted to get this before you that if you want to move it into the budget process, you'd have the opportunity to do that. But we're looking somewhere between uh, roughly a million to a million six. Okay. Would, um, would this start with the new fiscal year on October 1st? I would suggest we start it. If you move forward January 1st of 2014 to give us time to get all the details in place, we would have to renegotiate and amend the agreement, the current franchise agreement, but I don't believe we could get that done between now and October 1st. So we would uh, ask for January 1st, 2014. If we got it done sooner, we'd bring it back to the board. Would we look to also provide them with the annual cost of living increase that the current franchise agreement calls for? I would, I would say yes, but that's certainly something we could work on in, in negotiation. Um, yeah, and Mr. Jones, um, 
And where would this funding come from? I would suggest the first year that it be funded e through the uh, solid waste reserves. We currently have about three point three point four million dollars in that account, and in sub subsequent years, and you'll see in my uh, in the other components of my presentation that we're looking for means and ways of recouping some of those funds. Okay, so the, but there is there is money there in the account that <coughs> it could be it could start January first, two thousand fourteen, and there is money there in the account, and we expect that to. Uh, be replaced by more money in the next budget year. Okay. Well, this is, okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. And Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate what Mr. Jones has done, and I think it's got a lot of merit. Do we not have an issue with regards to, to two things? Number one, doesn't the Land Development Code define condo as commercial, and we do we need to change that? I don't think the, the land development the land, code. To answer it. part of that question, land development does code does say they yeah, are commercial it does. in nature. Okay, so will we need to change yeah. that because the the way that the ordinance is for paying for Wayne? You got to you got to come in, Wayne. Uh, Commissioner, I'd be a little hesitant to to use terms from the land development code for something else. <laughs> Typically, those terms are just used for the internal workings of the land development code. Um, there may be other conflicts that you may have. Um, I. But typically, the terms that are defined within that code apply to within that code, unless the commission chooses to, to do that otherwise. But but you're right; it does it does um, define some as as commercial. Will, will it have any impact on this? Okay, no, it's right. Uh, the second question is this: the current arrangement we have with the three cities in the county, yes, sir, uh, is after the costs are calculated, uh, the leftover money is distributed with those three cities and some with the county. Right. As it would stand without modification, that would reduce their share. So, is there a way we could incorporate saying that that this cost, assuming let's say the board votes to to approve something, that this cost would be subtracted after okay. the calculation, so that the cities would not be negatively impacted? I would I would agree that would be the appropriate way to approach it. That it would be out of the county's portion after that distribution. Okay, Mr. Okay. Chairman, that I'd like to make a motion that we adopt his, his recommendation is option number one at six dollars and eighty six cents per per condo unit uh, to start January first and that the cost calculation for this not impact the calculations for the distributions to the three cities. Is that complex enough? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Request of your motion that it that it include residential condominium units only. Okay, residential condominium units only. Okay. Well, that dies from the lack of a second. I'll make a motion. I, I, I'll make a motion that we um, we go for the full amount. We pay for the full amount, eleven dollars ninety three cents, like we do all the other residences. This has been going, this has been going on since nineteen ninety four, I believe, and I think it's time that we. Uh, we pick up our, our responsibility and provide for these. Um, they're just different types of residential units. So I, I make a motion that we adopt the 1193 per residential condominium unit. I second that motion. Okay. Any other questions? We got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Nay. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, following up that, um, oh, Mr. Hudson, I'm sorry, Mr. Hudson had a comment. I think. Mr. Hudson, you got a comment? Yes. If you, I, I don't want to steal. There's nothing. To, <laughs> yeah. You want him you to finish to, first, and then you? I, 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 so yeah, so, finish you know, first, Mr. Hudson. Are you on? And commissioners, before Mr. Hudson says that, obviously, as the presentation noted, this is dependent on the renegotiation of the contract with right, Waste Management. Right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here today. First of all, I want to thank you on behalf of the Walton County Taxpayers Association as we brought this issue to you about a month ago. At that point in time, y'all asked your special co uh, project coordinator. I called him your go-to guy at that point in time, and he has obviously been your go-to guy on this issue because he's come forward with a recommendation for you in a very timely fashion. And I appreciate that tremendously and the work that he's done. Uh, we chose at that point in time when you did 
make the decision that you were going to look at this to contact condominium owners. Uh, our membership, as well as the CAM managers here within Walton County, asking them to give you an indication of what their wishes were in this regard. Today I have for you a petition. I have one copy. It's 260-something pages in length. I will give your admin a electronic copy uh, before I leave today, but this petition contains the signature of 2,056 residents, owners, who are asking you to do what you've done today by your prior vote, and that is to treat those units equally with residential picking up whatever the cost is. Larry, that was, as a bean counter, I can tell you that was quite a uh, gymnastics uh, issue that you went through. And I appreciate that. But I do appreciate what you've done today. I think it goes a long way towards one, what I'm calling now One Walton, to where we have issues that are equally treated throughout the county. And I appreciate that. And the taxpayers and those 2,056 residents, owners, appreciate your action today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, as you come back up, um, I would ask that you get with Christine Samuelson with our GIS. She gave me some information yesterday to make sure we're not duplicating. Right. Uh, apparently, they're, they have been deep into this for a, a while. And, uh, and, and, I, and to Mr. Hudson and some of the others in the Taxpayer Association, I want to say I, I appreciate them allowing you and the staff to the opportunity to work through this process. We've had a number of conversations over the last two or three weeks, um, and uh, it's it's much easier, and I think it's uh, collectively we can get more things done if we will work together. And so I appreciate what they've done in allowing us to move this process forward and bring you good information to make a decision on. So move, um, having made that decision, if you'll look at the remaining portion um, there in your packet, Starting with number two, we need permission to work with waste management to amend the current um, franchise agreement to reflect the, the um, initiative that you just adopted. Um, it, in those blanks you see there, if you'll insert the number $11.93. And what we're going to ask is that waste management bill directly to Walton County, $11.93 for each residential condominium unit by residential condominium complex. And in the event that the total cost of those complexes are less than what the 1193 per unit would generate, we pay the entire bill, but there's no residual due either the condominium unit or to waste management. So if, if, you've, got a, if you've got a complex that has 100 units, they would bill the county $1,193 for those units. If the total bill for the units are, is $800, they bill the county $800, and the other $393 is not remitted either to waste management or the condominium unit. So that would be the second part. Um, number three, it, it, there's some language there from the um, current franchise agreement for collection and the, the agreements for disposal. The collection agreement says that our um, agreement will automatically renew uh, in 2000. In, it expires December 31, 2016. If the county does not notify waste management 60, at least 60 days prior to that, that uh, contract will automatically renew. And a similar situation in the disposal agreement, which uh, will end at the same time. But in that agreement, it says we have to give them one year notice in order for it not to automatically renew. So part of our recommend, recommendation today is to put waste management on notice on both contracts that the county opts out of those auto renewals, that uh, they're certainly willing to uh, participate in the negotiations, but we, we send those letters that exercise our option to keep those contracts from auto renewing. Then we began negotiations with waste management on a, on a broad scale to work to recoup some of the cost of this initiative, to consider the options we have available with the landfill, of opening the landfill and utilizing it uh, to its fullest extent and value, uh, to discuss rates and service levels moving forward. I would suggest we do that over the next six months, and if at that six-month period we've made significant progress that staff believes we can come to some renegotiated term, 
that would uh, either get us through the end of the contract or through an extension of the contract, uh, we'll come back with that. Absent being able to reach acceptable terms for a long-term agreement for collection and disposal, we'd come back and, and request that the board allow staff to begin moving forward with a request for proposals for collection and um, disposal of solid waste. I will certainly make the motion that we put them on notice to um, to redo these contracts. Okay. Um, and I also um, I been asking since before this new board for us to have a meeting on our landfill. We need a workshop. I've been asking for it over and over. We need to know what we can do out there, what we can't do, what are the possibilities, and it seems to always be pushed off, and that's time to you know, fish or cut bait. I, we need to have a workshop on our landfill and, and what are our options out there. And okay. then we know whether or not what we can negotiate on. I don't That's disagree. I think I think now's prime time, Commissioner. That ain't part of your motion, is it? Well, that is not part of my motion, but it's certainly a I mean, it's it's time that we did what well, we we should be doing. Our, uh, my staff's position is the the landfill is a valuable asset and we should look at the most effective and efficient way to utilize it as such. I probably would guess it's probably the most valuable land in all of northwest Florida at this it point. It will be. So Could my motion well is to, to put them on notice to, re, to um, redo the contract. Second. Is that clear, Mr. Jones? Well, uh, there are uh, there's three requests, uh, item two, item three, and item four. If those, do you encompass all of those yes, in I, your motion? I okay. encompassed them all. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You second, Commissioner Meadows? Yeah. You got a second on yeah. that? Two, three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Jones? Uh, in regards to what Commissioner Commander said, uh, do we want to go ahead and, and broach the subject or set a workshop for the um, landfill discussion. I certainly would like to. Do we need a motion on that, Council? To set a workshop, yes, for you would yes. need a motion. Well, I'll so move that we have a uh, a workshop yeah, yeah. dealing with the county landfill and our options available there. And I will second that motion. I'll we'll second motion. it twice if it'll help. Got a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll Mr. We'll, Offer, you have we'll the find a date and get that back to you. Mr. Offer, you have the tallies on the. I do, Mr. Chairman. The uh, number one ranked firm was Genesis, number two, Preparish, number three, HDR. Thank you. I need a motion to begin negotiations with Genesis. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Chairman, the next item was an add on. Uh, to Public Works, uh, Mr. Jason Coon, who is with the Juvenile Justice here in Walton County, has requested the county's assistance to haul uh, three loads of donated mill mat. It was donated by APAC. Uh, they're going to use that on their facility on Highway 90 to build some trails for the uh, juveniles there, and they would just ask that we help them to move that material to that site. And Public Works says they can work that into their schedule. Is that Any question? Naffy? Excuse me? Is that NAFI or where no. are you talking where about? Yeah. Where is it's it? It's out there on Highway 90. Uh, Keen Hurley Park. Mm -hmm. Keen Hurley Park, okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay. NAFI. That's okay. NAFI, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, my only question, and, and I know they're a fine organization, but if we start, you know, they're, again, if we open the door, can we close the door, you know? Yeah, I, I tend to agree because, um, you know, it. I mean, where do we stop? Where do we stop? You know, with what organization do we stop? And I mean, I'm all for helping people, but it is a, it is a county and it is a taxpayer-based um, mm -hmm. revenue. So, well, aren't they a par for profit? They're, they're a state organiza organization. I, I think. I, just for clarification, I don't believe NAFI runs it. I may be wrong, but I think NAFI's been out of there for a pretty long time. Is it DJ JD? I think it's just DJ JD. It's a state agency. It's a state. It's a state, it's a state, state agency. They can't yeah. haul it themselves, I guess. Yeah, uh, tell them to uh, take it out of our pension increases and we'll be glad, <laughs> yes. we'll be glad to trade them for We'll some. trade them, yeah. What do you want to trade? 
Well, you know, the state raised our pension um, account. So, and they, out of that, yeah. They also raised our cost for juvenile justice. Sure exactly. Yeah. So I think they can haul their, haul their stuff around. We'll call them and let them know. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, the next item is uh, a discussion on County Road 30A and the, the blowout that we have in the road there. Uh, if, if, uh, if I think Mr. Cliff Nower is here. He's done some work on that, as well as uh, Mr. Stafford could give a quick update on that and some options for the board as to whether we go in there and do a, a repair, uh, repair those culverts the way they were before, or if we do more of a permanent fix and try to... Uh, move forward this time with a bridge commissioners we do have an option we could actually get in quotes to get a diver there's actually one willing to go up in that pipe if we want to spend the money mm. not got the quote back yet <laughs> yes sir i would not do it either <laughs> but it's the only way to really know if you can open it up temporary because you send the camera you can't tell what the joints is doing from the bottom with the water what is your it's recommendation? Just a nice what's your, yeah. what's your what's your recommendation as far as, as repairing, um, putting a new bridge in, or repairing the bridge, or no, we can repair the path as far as what's there now, Commissioner. I mean, repair the repair the road. Is that what you're talking about? We can, but I, I couldn't do it without getting some kind of inspection oh, on okay. the path. It's there but, now. Yes, ma'am. It'd be too dangerous. Yeah. Would you recommend we? Try to patch it up, or that we we put a bridge span after in. after an inspection. If the inspection shows good that we can patch it, yes, ma'am, I'd patch it. Then I'd move forward with a bridge. Yeah. Then you do what? I would move move forward with trying with to the get bridge, a bridge, patch there. it, but then move forward with the bridge. Okay. We've got a lot of places on 38 that's patched that's sooner or later got to be addressed. Yeah. Um. What kind of liability do we have with a diver going in that pipe and yeah, it collapsing on him? Uh, whatever, whatever, whoever we hire to do that, we will have in, yeah. exculpatory oh, language. In holy moly. <coughs> I mean, that's I suggest scary. we get somebody really tiny. <laughs> really small. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks now, I mean, we, we know there's damage. The north side is completely caved in. We filled it back full of oyster holes. They hadn't, but one pipe worked. If you didn't, it would probably be wise not to waste the money on a temporary and let's go ahead and pursue a bridge okay. um how but that's going to take how long i mean i, re, I think right in there I, I was down there that there's no houses there's no right. so they can use so it, how long can we keep that closed to because what it's going to take us six months to oh, well, we've got to go through the bid process and the draft of the mm -hmm. design and all that six months or more to, re, to repair that thing. There's, there's really no reason that people, I mean, you can go around, there's yeah. alternate routes, so there's no houses in between there, so you can get in and out. Um, I have had requests to open up the bike path bridge, so maybe we could do that. But, but as far as cars and things, if we put more detour signs out, I think that people will, because I, I think to fix it is really the issue because we don't want it to cave in again. Yes. Well, then, I, mean, right. I think we need going, to pursue the bridge. If Let's we're going, go for a bri go we're going to a bridge, we wouldn't need a, nobody to go in the pipe at all. We could just go ahead and start. I mean, this pursue the bridge, we would not even look at it as open and temporary if you'd rather not spend the money. Yeah, where, I mean, where we can the, open the bike Where would path. the funds come from? Where would it be funded they from? They would probably have to come out of reserves. Okay. What, what would it be about? Five hundred thousand, you think? Man, five to five hundred fifty thousand. Could could Public Works do it? Could that? Yes, ma'am. We, we could, we do, could it. do it in house. We could do it for probably half that. Probably it, half that. So that's. But but it makes it makes sense. Why spend the money on temporary yeah. repairing it when we know we've got to do the bridge? Yes, Go ahead, keep it closed, and let's get the bridge started. I mean, that's yeah. That's I, I not only logical, but it's it's physically responsible. Yeah. Mesh will clarify just to clarify on the reserves. I'm not sure that the public works reserves would be adequate to do it, but I think that you've got still money left in the landfill reserves, yeah. which is for capital projects in this emergency situation. I would think that if we go if we go forward, that we would use the landfill reserves to fund it. Well, let's let's move forward with it. Okay. Which I, that's, I mean, Commissioner Meadows' district. I mean, do we need a motion? Wanna, well, I got yeah, a, I got a question if I can. Yeah. Uh, Wilmer, uh, Billy's sitting there too. Uh, if we started today with authorization to move forward for us to build a bit bridge, can we have it in place and open prior to the spring, spring break, break? March 1st. Can March. you get it done that quick? 
considering well, permitting? We're going to have to move into a permitting process. Um, Cliff may have already made some inroads on that. We made some calls this morning. Uh, Water Management District uh, agreed to facilitate and expedite the permit process. Uh, the core, I don't know. That's that's a whole different animal. At least six months, I imagine, unless they agree for some reason to. It's probably longer than that. Six months to get a permit. At least. Can we get some uh, uh, mm -hmm. somebody to kind of push them along? That's the core. So that would be Jeff Miller or uh, right. Steve Sutherland or. Yeah. We we can certainly have you know attempt to, to talk with them about it and see Our if we agree to, to move a little bit faster. Okay. But. Let's try to get let's try to get it moved along with maybe the chairman or vice chair could contact Jeff Miller. Or, and con or Congressman Sutherland, and uh, okay. also, we can write type a letter and do that. We that. We'll, we'll draft a letter for that. Yeah, we can draft a letter. Uh, and also, uh, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Now has already done a, a significant amount of work on this. He is one of our three firms. Uh, Purple Rich is one of the three firms that you had selected to do engineering work for the county. Uh, it would be expedient for him to continue on this process. Um, we haven't awarded any of those three firms yet any of the contracts, so he would be the first yeah, one. Yeah, I, I agree because they, you know, he's been. He, I think they they have all the information in house already, so I think that's a, a good recommendation. Is, is that your motion? We need to, we need a motion. To me a motion. Okay, I, I would move that we would we move forward with a bridge, and um, that we go ahead and um, assign this one to Preble Rish as, our, as one of our continuing. I'll make the second on that one. Any other questions? We have a motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Billy, did you have something you wanted to add? I was just going to point out again, this this has been submitted along with the other coastal dune lakes uh, for a NIFWIF uh, NERDA project to replace those. I don't know if there's any, you know, how fast that process will, you know, if we'll ever hear anything. <coughs> we can't wait on that. That could be... You know, yeah, I mean, five, so ten years down the road. But it, yeah. but it could be, it could, we could use it for some of the other ones though, that are evidently in the same condition. Okay. Thank you. So, Commissioner, Thank you. would you, will, you still want us to open the path back up? Uh, yeah. What do y'all think? The, safe. the, the, the yeah. it's, if it's safe. safe, if it's. Yes, ma'am, we can make the path safe. And I'd rather okay. put them on that and get them because a lot of them still crossing that road. Okay, yeah. yeah, make that. Well, How maybe you ought to put some more dirt like we did during Opal mm -hmm. and just took, close the whole right of way down where they can't drive around it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah, the bike path. Um, also, too, could y'all put some signs up like, um, I guess what people are doing is they're, they're, they're seeing this blinking sign and they're going all the way down to the end and then, you know, they're backing up in people's um, driveways and such. So I guess if we could put some signs out, detour this way, detour that way, something that gets yeah. people to know that Little Redfish, there's no through through fare there. Yeah, them should already be it, but I would check to make okay. sure. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Ms. Harris? I want to personally thank this committee for what you did for the garbage today, for all the condominiums. I think Walton County has taken a tremendous step forward. I want to personally thank Larry Jones. He came to Edgewater three times. He went through everything to do with my garbage and my employees and what it takes for a condominium to save waste management money three different times. I want to thank Kenneth Pridgen. You spent two hours at my project. You went through everything to do with Edgewater. You looked at our compactor, how the lake next door from the floods is about to undermine it. We're having to build a $100,000 seawall just to keep the compactor to make it easier on waste management. Bill Chapman, you were at Edgewater when the guy almost jumped off the roof when he was a freshman in med school. You saved his life. He is now a practicing surgeon at Johns Hopkins University. So you, you've known Edgewater for a long time. And Cindy, thank you for caring enough to find out about Edgewater's garbage, how much it cost me per employee. If anybody had cared enough to come years ago in the volleyball lawsuit, 
just looked at the volleyball net, it would probably save the county a fortune. If we can all work together and come and look and not just sit up here and be in the north of the county and make decisions that you never even have seen or looked at or understand just because that's the way. And Bill Enfield, you, you were able to come to me and ask for money for donations and Edgewater gave it to you, but you never cared enough to even come look at my garbage. Mm -hmm. And six dollars and something cents is an insult to the condominiums. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't know we had a hero or a medal winner. Did you get a medal for doing that, Bill? <laughs> you get a medal. Uh, well, let, I'm not going to take full credit for that. I, it was me and uh, Deputy McIntyre and two or three others who were there on the 11th, 12th floor, whatever it was. We snatched him off of it. Well, but that was a long time ago. When you're a lot younger, so what you're saying? Uh, I was a lot younger, yes. Commissioners, the next item is the uh, county administrative selection process. Uh, passing out a score sheet uh, for your use. Uh, you've, you've all seen this before. It's the same one we used for the TDC selection, and we also had it in your packet ahead of time. If you could fill that out, ranking or ordering the four candidates that you interviewed yesterday, pass it on to the clerk of court, and uh, he will tally those up and report back to the board. Mr. Chairman, while he's tallying those up, if you want to move on to the TDC, yes, we'll next item on the agenda, uh, Mr. Bagby. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, the first item that we bring before you today is a request to amend the scope of services uh, on the beach safety program with the uh, South Walton Fire District. There's two changes to the scope of services. Uh, first, we updated the tower locations, and then the second change was uh, allow the South Walton Fire District uh, beach officer to uh, close the water. Currently under the emergency management plan, uh, the matrix has uh, three entities that vote, for lack of a better term, to close the water. That would be the sheriff or his uh, designated representative, the South Walton Fire District chief or his designated representative, and the Tourist Development Council uh, executive director or my designated representative. Uh, what I told the chief was I will give my proxy to uh, Gary Wise uh, and we will bring back at a later time in conjunction with the sheriff's office in the South Walton Fire District an updated matrix uh, for the emergency management plan. Uh, the TDC uh, has a responsibility to the bed tax collectors and the, and the tourism industry to notify them when the water is closed, but I'm not comfortable thinking that any of us have the ability or the qualifications to make that determination. In every uh, operations center I've ever been in, the person on the ground made the decision, and then if it, you had to double check it or you had to second guess it, you did that at a later date. But the decision to close the water ought to be by the folks down on the water. So we'd ask you to approve those uh, changes in the scope, and if you do that, then we ask you to do a separate motion to approve uh, renewing the contract. Uh, Mr. Bagby, I have a question. Uh, I've never seen an AG opinion concerning the use of the fire department to pay for the lifeguards down there. Uh, I've heard there is one. I'm just asking, have we got it? If we have, I'd like to see it. If not, I believe we need to move forward to find out uh, if it's where it's supposed to be. Uh, Commissioner, I'll defer to the two attorneys, but I, I believe we sent you an email that said there wasn't, was never an AG opinion that right. was actually issued on the fire district, but the two attorneys did get together and discuss that issue. And I'll let Clay come up or I'll, I'll let Mark uh, go ahead and address that. 
Go, go ahead, Clayton, start out. China. Thank you, Commissioners. Yes, sir, Commissioner Chapman, what Mr. Bagby's told you is correct. At no point in time has Walton County ever pursued an attorney's general opinion, nor has received one, on the use of TDC funding for the lifeguards. We have looked at this issue. Mr. Davis has spoke to Mr. Alford, who's obviously doing an uh, overview of the TDC's issues. What we've looked at is that under the current statute, we believe it is a permissible expenditure of the money because we do have a beach safety program. When this was enacted originally, the intent was that we were going to promote beach safety to tourists. As I know some of the board members will remember, and probably all of you are at least somewhat familiar, when we looked at the bike path issue, the standard for funding that was, is it an activity, service, venue, or event that attracts tourists? And the standard for that is, do you promote it to tourists? This would be a service that is promoted to our tourists. What Mr. Davis and I are working on is we're working on a resolution to present to you that the board can adopt memorializing those findings to secure any issues. <coughs> One of the big issues that your neighboring <coughs> county, and I certainly don't want to get off in the weeds, so to speak, with what happened in a different circumstance. But one of their issues was a lot of their choices and expenditures were never formally documented in a way that somebody could look back and say, well, what did the BCC do about this? Was there a legislative finding? Is there some written statement of why the TDC is paying for this, or are they just paying for it and no one knows why? So that's what we're working on to bring to you. What we hope to do is bring that to you along with the appropriate documentation that will complete the uh, issue with the bike paths and maintenance of that. And it is my understanding, I don't want to step on Mr. Alford's toes by any means or Mr. Davis's, but it is my understanding that the clerk has likewise concurred that that would be an appropriate step that would secure the board's prior action as well as future expenditures on this issue. That's my legal opinion as well. It's Mr. Davis's, from what I understand, but I'll defer to Mark at this time. And Clay's correct. J just so we're clear, the latest round of court cases essentially come down to as long as it is found by you guys, the Board of County Commissioners, to be tourist-related, then if we have a resolution or some documentation that says that you guys find that, then the expenditure is okay. Uh, and, and that's Mr. Alford and I have talked at some length about that. We're we, we're going through the language of the resolution to make sure it meets those court cases, and, and we'll should have it to you the next meeting, I would assume. Uh, that would let be me my intent. Let me throw this out to the council here. Uh, now, if you, let me. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's got to be reasonably related to tourist services. I mean, you can't buy, <laughs> build a, a tower somewhere well, in North Walton County and call I, it related. I understand to that, but if you're taking and making that uh, legislative finding, if you will that you're recognizing that, then why cannot we, why can it not expand a little bit further to include the sheriff's office? They have to supplement and augment the amount of coverage down there during, from spring break through the summer because TDC is advertising to bring folks down there. So uh, I, I know you ain't supposed to augment a sheriff's or a sheriff fire EMS, but the thing is, is because of the great efforts of the TDC and they're bringing thousands and up to millions of people over a course of a year down here we are to be able to make the same type of finding because of that it's increased uh, his need a uh, need for his response here yeah I'll be glad to address that Commissioner uh, that is something we've looked into in fact that's been an issue that goes back probably to February of this year if not slightly before um, I know Commissioner Meadows is one of the first commissioners to address this issue. Our neighboring county, Bay County, has undertaken the process of funding additional law enforcement services. There is some discrepancy based on some old AG opinions that address funding of general required services, for instance, law enforcement specifically, which are a general duty owed to all. Bay County took the exact same reasoning that we just discussed based off of their promotional set of data to do that. I believe Mr. Bagby spoken with Dan Rowe, the executive director over there. I've spoken to the attorney for the TDC over there and discussed what process they went through. That's certainly something that is, if the board, let me say this, if the board wants to make that determination that we need to expand our beach safety program, the TDC's marketing effort should include marketing beach safety in a way that would include our provision of law enforcement services as a service to the public. It is something that could be done, and we'll be glad to get you the information on what that would look like as well as what was done in Bay County. I would simply suggest that 
to say that it is the exact same thing as the lifeguards, considering we have an established beach safety program that we've marketed for the better part of seven or eight years. I'd have to probably defer to the chairman. I believe he was here when that first went into I think it's effect. it's longer than that, yeah. And it may be longer than that. Yeah. I know we had the... Let me ask you a question. Um, Panama City, Bay County, uh, my understanding was that they paid for additional officers only during spring break because they advertise for spring break. We do not advertise for spring break. That was what I, that I, we went through this whole thing right. that, um, you know, that TDCs could not pay for um, for police uh, unless it was specifically tied to something that you um, advertise and it's, it was for spring break that time. So and that is correct. Commissioner, I'll note one other thing. When they did their legislative findings, the attorneys for the TDC over there and I've discussed it, one of the things they added in was some set of provisions and findings that were supported by some of their research data that would allow auxiliary officers to be brought in at other special events or large areas where it was promoted. For instance, a family-friendly weekend that's being geared to bring your families here, bring your kids here, we're a safe environment. Um, I'd also note one of the big differences in Bay County and Walton County is that their marketing efforts, as Mr. Bagby I'm certain can talk to much more clearly than I, have really geared on trying to move what their image was in the spring break heyday of the mid to late 90s to what it is today. And as far as promoting that to the families that we've had here for quite a while. So that is one of the differences and that let me, we would have to readdress let, let our marketing efforts. Let me stop because this is, this is a closer question in, in my mind, I think in, in Clay's mind as well. We would have to, A, document the marketing efforts, B, have some empirical data that that the marketing efforts lead to more people who are seeking who are relying on extra law enforcement and that the extra law enforcement can't be funded otherwise. I think there's a little bit of a different standard when we're talking a service, a generally provided service throughout the county that would be funded by uh, TDC, if, if that makes sense. So I, although I, I feel very confident and we're prepared to go forward with the lifeguards and the other things we've talked about in our resolution, this one's going to take, if the commission chooses to go down that path, this one's going to take a little more documentation and time than than the other the other matters that we are well, I'd like for us to at least take a look at I mean the the sheriff's department has to buy you know beach vehicles um, you know that can go through the sand and all that sort of thing and they're there um, during the time when we advertise from what, May to September um, to bring families in and certainly <clears throat> um, it is an advantage to our tourists to have a sheriff's department on that beach protecting those people and to me uh, it, just, it may take some numbers, but to me it's clear. We, we just yeah. have to be able to document, tie it to the marketing, and tie it to an increased need in that particular area as related to the marketing. I think so. there's the man right there. The... And part, I think they, they already you know, have. They already have yeah, for because me. part of the problem, I mean, we'll, we'll look into it, but to, yeah. to kind of reinforce what the attorneys have told you is, remember, we, we didn't hire the fire department, okay? You competed out for lifeguards. You had a process <coughs> where you brought in and, and, and did a competitive bid, and the winner of that bid just happened to be the South Walton Fire District. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't fund. A di I'm sure the the fire department will come up and say, "Well, we have a lot of increased calls, and EMS has a lot of increased calls during spring break or during the summer." And so then, then we and that's the slope that the lawyers are trying to to keep everybody off of and so we can look at the numbers I don't have a problem and, and whatever guidance I get from the two attorneys and and the board I don't have a problem following but but you have when you when you worst case this it, it's then the TDC becomes the capital construction project company and the uh, de facto funding source for everything that happens on the south end of the county just because tourists come to the south end of the county and that that's what the law does not allow so we, we, we'll do our due diligence thank you and, and um, major joe preston uh, for the record from the sheriff's office just to make a, a clear delineation i think on what uh, commissioner chapman was saying is sometimes when we think of the sheriff's office we think law enforcement only in those times that the fire department does not have lifeguards on the beach we do participate and perform a life preserving and life-saving function. We have long boards. We have our folks that are trained by the fire department personnel. So understand we're not talking about 
supplementing law enforcement services, but those life-saving services that, that we do supplement <coughs> in this arena as well. So there's a clear distinction on that. Have we made a motion yet? Uh, we need a motion. No, to but I, I, I would <laughs> like to. I would like to make a motion that we re, um, that we amend the scope of services for the beach safety services. Um, that's my first motion. I'll second that motion. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Next one is to approve the. Commissioner? Yes. amendment affect that resolution that already exists no we're going to as I stated earlier we're going to bring an amendment back to that resolution okay uh, that it. changes that gives mm -hmm. basically the uh, fire department the ability mm -hmm. to make that decision and I think the second motion needed to be to the approve. lifeguard lifeguard services approve agreement that's correct right. now, that. now that you've changed to approve the change of scope then right. the the contract Your automatically renews but we're since we changed the scope we'd ask that right. you approve the one-year that's, extension that's my motion okay <clears throat> yes i'll second have a motion to second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries and then we'll have john come up to do the uh the public relations agency and in, in the couple of tasks Yes, thank you, Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. Clerk, John Irvin of the TDC. I have three items for you. First one is regarding the uh, Public Relations Agency. Currently in Penn, our current agency has gone through two renewals, which was the allowable amount. So as you may recall, we went out for RFP through the county finance process. We had seven uh, submitters. That was scored down to three finalists who were asked to come and present to a panel of evaluators. Uh, Curly uh, Penn and Spring O'Brien accepted that invitation. Spring O'Brien was the top evaluated firm that was uh, shared with the TDC Advisory Council and they unanimously recommended to approve uh, uh, entering into con uh, contract with that top evaluated firm, Spring O'Brien. So we bring that before you today. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for that. The next one actually wouldn't need to come before you because it is a fairly modest uh, financial uh, effort, but we certainly um, treat it with great importance. The um, beach access signage and awareness of beach safety is, a, is certainly a big deal. We went through in 2013 workshops with the community regarding signage. We have had a family of signs that's sort of uh, expanded without a lot of continuity. We were looking for a way to reinforce the message because if you only provide it once, you can't expect uh, you know, good adoption. We did not want to uh, change the horizon with new more signs. So what you have before you is a proposal of uh, doing some deck graphics. They are OSHA approved appliques that would go on our treks, which is that um, non-wood material at the regional walkovers, which is 12. We would suggest just doing the 12 uh, as a beta test. Again, shared this op opportunity with the TDC Advisory Council and a unanimous recommendation to try this beta test. It's um, all told the cost would be you know, under $1,500 to do our regional accesses, and we uh, selected the top seven messages to reinforce. It's mildly interruptive marketing so that um, beachgoers do come in contact directly with these important points. So we would share that with you today. John, uh, I, I know you gave us an example of each one of the yes. particular ones. Uh, would each one of these access points have multiples? A set of seven, set and of then seven. we would, um, after uh, going through the initial deployment, we'd end up with an SOP of exactly how they're placed, in what order. This is not about advertising or selling product. This is simply safety message and compliance message. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll give you an update once those are out in the real world. And the last one I have is uh, for our um, ad agency of record. We've completed our first term with Zender Communications. They've done an outstanding job. We um, 
asked the TDC Advisory Council's opinion on whether or not we could exercise one year of that contract. It was unanimously recommended to the Board of County Commissioners that we would continue as under communications and uh, for another year. Yeah, and if you if you go through the Nashville Airport any time within the next a month month, all you're going to see is visit South Walton. Wow, it's they call it taking over the airport. They've taken over everything, even the luggage. Um, Dozens of applications in Nashville, uh, Baltimore, in Midway, in Chicago. There's an awful lot of really good stuff being done that um, increases the value of our. Uh, product, not just the uh, attendance. We're always about value. So um, I'm proud to stand and ask for consideration for one more additional year for Zender Communications. It was it was very impressive. So I move that we extend their uh, uh, contract. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approve. Thank you so much. The next item on the agenda for the TDC uh, commissioners is to request to approve the establishment of four TDC committees. Uh, they're listed there. Just to give you a sense of uh, the interest and excitement, uh, we've put this message out two weeks ago. We've already had 98 hits on our website on this link, and we've had 20 uh, applications, hard copy applications submitted for the 36 seats uh, that will be on these four committees. So. Uh, we, there's a lot of interest in the county to uh, help uh, move the product <coughs> forward, the brand forward, and uh, we're very excited about that. And we just ask that uh, you approve that. And then. Second. A motion to say all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And, motion carries. Okay. And then the last thing is, just want to give you a heads up. We've received email traffic from Southwest Airlines uh, that basically they're going to back out of the agreement uh, for the half cent uh, expenditure co-op program, advertising pro program that we entered in with them. Just to remind you that uh, half cent was for either to attract a low-cost carrier or to uh, market in emerging markets. And so some of the wraps that we're using this year at the airports that John mentioned and uh, Commissioner Meadows mentioned is coming out of that half cent uh, bed tax. We will bring back to you in October after we've taken it to the TDC uh, and ask for their guidance on whether to uh, recommend termination of that half cent at the, when it sunsets at the end of, uh, end of September next year or to refocus it only on emerging markets or what to do with it. But we should be getting a formal letter from Southwest Airlines in the next 10 days. And once we get your decision in October, we'll, we'll reply accordingly. Thank Subject you. to any questions, that's Thank all you. Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Alford. Mr. Chairman, the top-rated candidate was Mr. Jones. The second was Mr. Brown. The third was Mr. Gomillion. The fourth was Mr. Rabin. We need a motion to. We need a motion to. Top candidate. To accept. Yep, accept. Motion to accept. Second. Got a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, you, Mr. Jones. Yes. Uh, would you like to. Uh, have Mr. Davis begin <laughs> negotiations for his agreement, or how would you like to handle that? I think we and whatever the board would like to do with it, we're going to go out. I don't know whether they need to look at Mr. Bagby's uh, contract or what, but I would like Mr. Jones to uh, be able to start tomorrow morning or this afternoon or whenever. <laughs> we, need, we need to get – we, he's already with the county, and just move him in that position. <clears throat> they start running, taking care of business. Is that all right with Can the board? Can you start or? tomorrow, Larry? Was, that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good with the board or? Fine with me. Okay. The difficulty we might have is the, the payroll issue, but we can go back and right. readjust that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, thank you, Commissioners. I have three items. The first is you asked me to uh, prepare a professional services agreement uh, between the county and my firm uh, for you to procure my services or my firm services as the county attorney. It's essentially the same contract I have as the interim county attorney, except the monthly retainer does have a cap on it. And the only way I could exceed the cap is to get your prior permission. I really don't believe that would ever happen, but I, I wanted in that in there just in case something came up and I had to spend more time than I anticipate. Uh, everything else is essentially the same. There is a provision where I supervise the county legal staff. I'm leaving that in there for now with your permission. Uh, that might cause some headache with our Florida retirement system. I'm not, by the way, participating in the Florida retirement system with this uh, contract. It's an independent contract. I have uh, two opinions from FRS right now whether it matters or not. And, and frankly, as long as I am, just to be blunt, a school board employee and they're paying on the school board side for my, uh, on, on the FRS, it should not be an issue. But if it is, I'll come back with an amendment. But I do not anticipate that being an issue. Okay. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve the contract. Second. Have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next item I have is the item we had last uh, two weeks ago regarding the lease with re regional utilities. Uh, you asked me a couple of questions, one of which was, do we have other uh, folks in the building? And indeed we do. Uh, we do not have subleases with those folks, but we are in the process of contacting them and drafting uh, some sort of sublease with them. We need that not for money necessarily, but for liability issues. and and those types of issues. I also spoke with Melissa Pilcher, and I believe Didi also spoke with Melissa Pilcher. Uh, they are not at this point seeking a, a swap of in-kind services. It would be a straight rental of, of uh, 2000 a month for the entire building, uh, and that includes the apartment upstairs and, and the entire building itself. What, what, we have an open apartment. Yeah, they must be. What about the maintenance costs? We, we have modified this one from the last one that would basically say we are responsible for the essentially day-to-day -day maintenance, anything caused by an act of God, a hurricane, a storm that causes those types of damages, flooding, then, then uh, regional utilities would be in charge, would be responsible for that. Do you know the reason for eliminating the in-kind services? No, sir, I do not. You, did she say anything to you? I, I do not. Idea. No, no I, they just kind of showed up in my office one day and said, um, we want you to... Uh, it, pay us now. It, it is still in the contract if we can negotiate some in-kind services for the swap. It's still in the contract, but at this I figured point, they, they would needed be seeking them, pay. figured they needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to borrow from them. How much is the rent for the apartment up there? <laughs> I'm just saying, can we rent, can we rent that apartment out? I mean, we can. Know. Whatever we want to charge, it's, 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 I think it's a one-bedroom apartment, one-bedroom, one-bath. It, it doesn't have any furniture in it, but... And it has its own entrance. The lease does allow for us to sublease. Yeah. And we have a couple other office spaces in there that we could actually sublease out. I don't, you know, if, if we so chose. So we could actually probably end up, Mitigating. you know, with, with no rental income coming from the county if we got those other folks to pay up a, a little bit, rented out the two-bedroom apartment, I mean the one-bedroom apartment. Motion to approve the contract? And let's see if we can rent out the, second, the upstairs. Yeah, yeah, second. I yeah. mean, I guess, do we? can we advertise in the public for that? Sure. Can we advertise? Yeah. Okay. okay. We're being a landlord business, I think. Yeah, we, have a, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. The last item I have, Commissioner, uh, is another uh, ship mortgage. This is a short sale situation. Uh, Commissioner Enfeld has asked me to come up with a policy, and I, every time I draft it, I come across a different situation where a ship uh, mortgage comes into play. Uh, I'm also looking through the federal statutes and the, and the Code of Federal Re Regulations dealing with ship mortgages. One of the things I discovered and, frankly, did not know is if the ship mortgage is in place with the same person who actually took it out for 10 consecutive years, the mortgage goes away anyway by operation of its terms. This is a short sale situation. The value of the home, according to the appraisal we received, is $175,000. The sale price is $174,900. Uh, we're going to receive, and I'm rounding here, $6,500 and some change, and we would be forgiving the difference, essentially. Kim, um, could Kim... Uh, 
uh, Winterberg come up and kind of explain this? Because I got a letter, I don't know the rest of you did, I got a letter, I think, from this gentleman, and I'm kind of uh, Ms. a little Ms. Winterberg is the sales agent. Yes, Ms. Winterberg, yeah. Kim Winterberg. Uh, Kim Winterberg, broker associate with Selling Dreams Realty, uh, representing the seller in this sale. Uh, we, what, what questions do you have? Well, um, I think from the way I read the letter, did anybody else get it? Or is it just, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, does he want us to forgive the, the 6,000? Is that? It's actually asking to forgive approximately <clears throat> 3,600, 6,200 and change, we'll uh, or excuse me, uh, 3,800, 6,200 and change would actually be paid back to the SHIP program. Uh, and as Mr. Davis said, normally that's forgiven after a 10-year period anyway. It is an interest-free loan that's considered a second. Uh, the first mortgage is actually a direct USDA loan. Uh, and the second is where the shortfall comes in. So of the 10000 approximately 6200 and change would be paid back towards SHIP. Okay. And, and this is a short sale where the lender is the first mortgage holder is agreeing to accept less than well, what's owed on their mortgage okay. as well. Correct. Um, I'll, I, Shouldn't the county get the whole 10000 back? Well, yep. there wouldn't be under this particular short sale. Again, the lender, the first lender is agreeing to accept less as well. Um, there probably would not be enough funds lent, lent to, to satisfy. Oh, employees. so we're going to waive the, the, why don't we, I'd rather not waive anything. Uh, these are just coming uh, over and over and over again. I think we ought to at least split it with SHIP. Well, we, we, we would be receiving of the 10000 we loaned, we would be receiving under this proposal $6,200. Yeah. Or SHIP would be receiving. We would, okay, SHIP would be receiving. I, okay, I got it. Yeah, because from that letter, I don't see there's any way where this gentleman can come up with the money. So, I mean, you know, um, I'll make a motion to letter. accept the, the proposal. Is that what? Yeah, uh, I'll make the motion to accept the proposal. Don't like it, but I, I don't. A motion, have a second. I'll second it with a comment, please. Okay, yeah. Don't like it. Commissioner Meadows, you're right. We see a lot of these coming in here. And what I think is happening is that wherever this negotiation starts with the sale, people that make the, the deal go through, they get their $10,000 and they walk away from it. Yeah. And then knowing full well, probably at some times, <coughs> those people can't even qualify for what it was, the way they were doing it back years ago. And that's why we went and tanked. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm second this motion, but I just wanted on the record, uh, it's, it doesn't look right and it smells. Well, one of the things I'm looking at in terms of policy is if the ship money was paid to a to an owner who then you, the, the ship money was essentially used as a down payment, the owner received whatever amount, the $10,000, and then that person ends up either – it usually ends up foreclosing. The person holding the first mortgage was the owner, sold it was a purchase money mortgage. I have some, that's not the situation here, by the way, but I, one, of, one of the things I'm going to be bringing to you guys is I have a concern about that person taking the 10000 and then coming back and asking when they sell the property after a foreclosure or part of a foreclosure, receiving forgiveness or part of forgiveness of the ship mortgage. So that's, that's something we're going to consider. But, again, that's not this situation. Well, this I know uh, it's not actual county dollars, but it's everybody out there oh, yeah, pays federal dollars. tax dollars. Yes, that's sir. right. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and I guess if we want to blame somebody, we can blame the federal government. I mean, there was a period of time in there where they were making loans to anybody that could walk through the door. And a lot of these, you know, knowing that they couldn't pay the bill eventually. But in this case, uh I saw such a hardship there and just say, we're, well, at least we're getting some back rather than nothing at all. Yeah. Well, and if it does make you feel any better, and this is just a generality, but in my 15 years of experience in the last six or seven of lots of short sales, second mortgages as a general rule are getting paid back at a rate of approximately 10 to 15 yeah. percent. So we're at 60 percent, wow. which I think is a real good thing for the taxpayers. Yeah, look, yes, sir. Yeah, my my yeah. comment was a concern that in this letter that some of us received, uh, the gentleman that, that's asking for this forgiveness says he lost his temper, and as a result, he, he took his wife's uh, credit cards, and the, this, <laughs> this spiraled into this situation like this. And my concern is that he acknowledges it's his actions that caused this, and yet he's looking to us to bail him out. And it, well, he he also had a three-year-old with leukemia uh, that the medical bills mounted and caused family 
problems. So, I, and I do, I appreciate what you're saying, but there were some other extenuating circumstances that I'm not sure uh, he explained very well in his letter. Okay. I think the program needs to be looked at. I, th I think we ought to. I think we ought to go up to the top and look at the program with with our congressmen and our That's senators because it's it's it, it appears to be just you know it's setting us up for losses. Just the, the fact that it's a second mortgage makes it extremely yeah yeah, yeah we, we're never gonna never gonna. Yeah, so. I think we it's one of the things we need to talk to our federal representatives about. It's just crazy. Okay. Call the question. I believe I made the motion. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Motion carries. Thank, thank you. you, commissioners. That's all I have. And thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Commissioner Meadows? Oh, uh, yes. Um, Yeah, I think I just had one thing. Um, I, I just I wanted to talk about the pump, the pumps, the pumps that pump out the flood water. Evidently, we have. Um, Did we skip a bunch? Yeah, we, we're gonna come back to it. Oh, I just okay. we just caught it. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to bring up the the issue of the pumps, the pumps that pump you know water. Evidently, the county has one of them, but it's it's broken. And so we borrow one, I think, from regional. And then a lot of people have told me that they rent pumps. Um, they're very expensive to rent as well. A lot of private owners rent pumps. So my, my question is, sh shouldn't the county have a couple of pumps that we own that are in working condition at all times so that when we get in these situations that we don't have to wait for regional to approve, or we don't have to, you know, we don't have to depend on anybody else, or get the one that we have, get it fixed. There's somebody in the back waving their hand. I'm not quite sure who it is, but um, I don't know if that's He's a just waving comment or something. Yes. But anyway, that, that's my question. Is we did get our the one pump is fixed now. We've got it back going. Okay. Uh, so yes, we, we need a pump. We have one pump. One it, pump in the whole county. Yeah. Yes, we got but one pump. You got to have a crane or an excavator when you take it out to set it up. It's a brand new pump. Got three hours on it. it was got back when we was pumping the lakes, but it's just no use for us unless you pump in a lake. Would it be cheaper to rent pumps, or would it be better to buy? And, and maybe you, you don't have the answer to that question right now, but I just I wanted to bring it up because I felt like it was something that we needed to have on hand. Uh, Can just effort wasn't that pump purchased? as part of the response to the oil spill it was, because yes, there was concern that there was going to get uh, oil okay. residue into the coastal dune lakes. Mm -hmm. okay. and, right. Yes, yeah. it's hydraulics is actually some kind of cooking oil that it runs off of. Am I, am I correct? We spent $40,000 for that pump? I think thirty-two, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. And the most we can get out of it, if you sell it right now, seven. Yeah. They, won't, they don't want to give you nothing but because of the way the pump's designed. Well, shouldn't we just hang on to that one in case we need it for the coastal dune lakes oh, yes. again if and buy another one? Lake. Shouldn't we get another one? Well, yeah. We can't give it away for seven thousand. Yeah, I, I'd say we keep that one and get another guess, one. What, what would the rental cost be? And the, uh, I've just got the quotes in before we came over here, and we could actually get set up for around fifty grand. We get the hose to pump, brand new pump. Is that purchase, or is that um, that's it's purchase? The, uh, What's our rental? Cost we can get a. Rent? Oh, Lord, I didn't get no rental prices. Oh, I Harris, do know that, that, yeah, I do know some Harris people rented, rented one. We might be able to get a government price, but I think it's pretty expensive. Yeah. Also, while she's coming up, we also have a contract with Crowder Golf, Golf Crowder. that they can do that type of work as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who? We have a pump at Edgewater that I got from Thompson Pump. We used it 4th of July when our lower garage is flooding because of the Shipwatch Lakes and all coming on to us. Uh, for 4th of July, we used it for seven days. The rental cost was $1,700, and it pumps 1,500 gallons a minute out. So it pumps my parking garage when it's above your knee. It pumps it out within an hour. Uh, the guy offered to sell Edgewater the pump, 
for uh, $4,000. But edge, and we're pumping, we were pumping last week, we're not now. So it's probably costing me, I've had it 10 days this time instead of seven, so, but it's, it, but we're putting all the diesel in it, and we're managing it. But really and truly, the maintenance on those things, when you buy one for 30 something thousand dollars, and then when you need it, it's not even running. It's kind of like the tractor that would have gotten all the garbage off at Wells Tail, that we had the tractor and we had the thing, but of course it was not running. Y'all don't need to be buying all this expensive equipment if you can't take care of it. It's easier to lease it. When I called Thompson Pumped, I called four days before the storm was coming. Thompson Pump told me that I could have that one and that they had every other pump already on standby for other municipalities. I was the only individual that got one. Right now, Shipwatch is running one, trying to get Shipwatch off of the street at 98, where, where y'all looked at. They're running one that pumps 200 gallons a minute. Mine's 1,500 gallons a minute. It's easier for y'all to make a deal with, with Tall Dean at Thompson Pump, make a deal with him. If he knew you were going to use it every time, he brings it before the storm, he sets it up, he comes back, he takes it apart, he takes it off with him. All you have to do is have your staff run it, and then they service it. Uh, thank you. Could you come back to us with some yeah. figures or because or, we'll have to do an RFP, I guess, you know, for, for services, on how much it would cost to rent one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how much and it costs to rent one? Also, I think you need to look at Crowder Gulf and see what they yeah. charge to mobilize and what they would... Yeah. What they got some idea of what they could yeah. get yes, charge if we got a contract with them. You have a contract you know. with them. We're getting something like this again. We need to activate them. Okay. So Can you, a lot of work on our games. Thank you. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. They were moving that one pump around like oh, yes, what, every. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, public hearings. Will be the next item. Uh, Ms. Quimby from the Finance Department has the first one. <clears throat> And, and we'll need to open the public hearing, vote on the item, close the public hearing since we're moving. Make a motion on. that we open the public hearing. We have a motion of second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is a public hearing to bring forward funds in the sidewalk fund for the South Holiday and San Juan Road sidewalks. Questions? Motion. This, Sorry. This, oh, this okay. is a public hearing. Anyone would like to speak in support of opposition? Seeing none, what's the board's wishes? Motion to approve. I have a motion to say all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Opposed? You. Motion carries. Motion Need to close to the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. I have a motion to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Commissioners, on the next three, you'll, you'll need to close the public hearing, then vote, because oh. we're not moving money within these. We're not moving money, okay. I think there's four, four of them, them actually. Them. Excuse uh, me, four, I'm sorry. Can we take them all four at one time, or do we have to do them all individual? Okay. Individual. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, this is for Doggett Canal MSBU for the maintenance services annual rate resolution. Uh, there is a change on this one for this year. Uh, it used to be by parcel, and that was changed to be by uh, boat slip because one parcel owner went in there and put several boat slips. So to make it equal for all the people that live there, they now divide it by the number of boat slips. Any questions? This is a public hearing. Anyone like to speak in support of opposition? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Come, yes, ma come to the podium. Hey, ma'am, would you state your name for the record, please, yeah. ma'am? Linda Chauvet. I live in Point Washington in Doggett, okay. and I just simply don't understand the wording in it, in the um, proposition. Um, they're saying it's not a tax, yet it is a tax, and uh, I just, um, it's wonderful. I don't have a boat. Uh, the canal's wonderful, but I simply can't. Um, I, I'd like to try and find out about claiming a hardship. Or something I can't eat. It's been an extra nine hundred dollars since two thousand eight, and twenty four seven I care for my daughter. I, Mr. Davis might remember me from the school, but um, my daughter Hannah, and I don't know what avenue to take. 
with this. I truly don't. Um, when I went up to the county, they said no one's ever claimed mm -hmm. hardship before. Of course, this is not an easy thing. Commissioners, <coughs> what I would suggest, I believe the original resolution does have a hardship provision, in, or mm -hmm. Dee and I were talking about it. So what I would suggest is have this nice lady contact administration about whether or not there is a hardship provision and how you would go about applying for it. Okay, where would I leave that? A quick question. Is this for the, just the maintenance of the canals, or was this part of a repayment of a capital loan with a bank? I don't remember it's that, Commissioner. Maintenance. I, really don't. I think it's, I don't remember. It's just for the maintenance? Maintenance, yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else like to speak? I'll make the motion to close the public hearing. Second. Now, motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, the next one is the we've got a, we've got Imperial Lake. We've got we have to approve that. Oh, we get a vote. Okay. Right. Um, make a motion to approve the Doggett Canal Improvements and Maintenance second. Service. We've got a motion second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next one is Imperial Lakes. We need to open the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to open public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is the uh, annual approval of the rate, rate resolution. There's no change from last year. There's no change, as you say? No change. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone, anyone would like to speak in support or opposition? Seeing none, need a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion to close. Second. Now, motion second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Before we move, move in, I own a parcel in this. Should I abstain from voting on? No, sir. Okay. You're taxing yourself. So that's You're right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve the uh, Leisure Second. Lake annual rate. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Raise motion carries. Bill. You just raised that your was, That was Imperial Lakes, is that correct? Me, yes, sir. Okay. No. Yeah, it was Imperial Lake. It was Leisure Lakes. Okay. We're on Leisure Lake now. Okay. Next, Next one will be in, uh, Leisure Lakes. We need to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Now, motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Again, this is the uh, annual rate resolution for the MSBU. There's no change from last year. This is a public hearing. Anyone would like to speak in support or opposition? Seeing none. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Have a motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve the Leisure Lake annual rate resolution? Second. Have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The last one is the Four Mile Village. Need to open the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. <laughs> a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is the annual rate resolution. There's no change from last year for Four Mile Village. This is a public hearing. Anyone, <clears throat> anyone here like to speak in support or opposition? Seeing none, what's the fourth wish? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Need a motion to motion to approve. Second. Have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. yeah, if you want to. Yeah. You want to take a break? We're gonna we're gonna take about a ten minute break. You said you was looking for a shed the other day. You got an apartment above your place. Well, we were, she was a shed that I, I was looking for.